house in the middle of the city. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. What's up, my man? How you doing? Hey, how are you? Good. I'm fantastic. Good. Ranger Vlad, good to see you. Thank you too. What's up, guys? I'm Jordan Fisher, and I'm here in New York's historic Hamilton Heights, standing on the back porch of the Alexander Hamilton's final home, which is crazy, and known as the Hamilton Grange. Hamilton was one of the nation's founding fathers and served as the Secretary of the Treasury. His story has been getting a lot of buzz, rightfully so, thanks to the hit Broadway and Tony award-winning musical, Hamilton, uh, in which I got to play his best friend and his son, Philip Hamilton, which was uh, really rad. And I'm here on behalf of the National Park Foundation to give you a personal tour of Hamilton's famous country home. And my friend here, Ranger Vlad, is going to walk us through some of the cooler, lesser-known stories, because we, we've got the scoop, and we want to let you know about that as well. And just so you know, this is just one of the many stories to explore when you visit a national park. I encourage you all to get out there and find your park, right, and share this video so that everybody knows uh, what you can do in a place like this. Can you, uh, we want to get started? Hey, we'll wanna, let's, do, let's do the thing, come on. Go. Let's do it. Beautiful. Oh, well, hello, George Washington. Hello. Good to see you. Did, this is, uh, obviously, this is, a, this is a replica. This is a right? replica. The okay. original, which was done by Gilbert Stewart, was given to Alexander Hamilton as a gift during his time as Secretary of Treasury Fantastic. and would have hung in this house. That's awesome. George was, he was kind of a father figure, Correct. obviously, yes. to, to Alexander. So that's, mm -hmm. that makes perfect sense. I mean, this room is, is so beautiful. Uh, all the natural light coming in mm -hmm. uh, is a beautiful thing. Obviously, this is, uh, wouldn't be considered a luxury home by today's standards, but back then. It this would have been, yeah. This was the countryside, gotcha. if you think of. Yeah. Almost like the Hamptons of the day. Right. This is where the wealthy people would come to get away from the city. Which is incredible. I mean, the, 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 there's obviously no central no, AC. This is way before central. So being able to throw these massive windows yes. up, getting a nice breezeway, yes. this really, this was a vacation. This right. was a vacation home, mm -hmm. which is beautiful. Uh, I want to touch really quickly on uh, the fact that some of this furniture here um, is actually yes, real. Right? Correct. Half the chairs in this room are original. Amazing. Louis the Sixteenth style is just reupholstered, and the other half are replicas based on that same design. And and the in terms of the originality, that includes the piano. The That's piano okay. forte is an original piece that actually belonged to his daughter. Angelica, given to her by her namesake, Angelica Church. That's amazing. Being able to turn to, to music after, you know, hard times like mm -hmm. her father yes. dying just a few years after her brother, whom she was very right. close to. Correct. It's obviously a very important thing, even even back then. Which yes. Is, which is awesome. This room here is beautiful. Yeah, so you take a walk? Yeah, oh. absolutely. So I'm from the South originally. I'm originally from, <clears throat> from Birmingham, Alabama. And uh, my grandmother on my father's side, uh, may she rest in peace, had a beautiful room in, the, in her home mm -hmm. um, that smelled a little bit like, yeah. you know, old people. And everything was covered in plastic, right. all antiques. Um, it was the room that was there in the house that nobody really ever used, mm -hmm. a formal dining room. This was, right. this this was, was kind the of, formal dining room, which would have been reserved for guests and sure. special occasions. Yeah. Well, it's beautiful. I mean, the, the silver all over the place, including the silverware. There's a, there's a significant reason why yes. the So silverware. you notice the silverware is set up face down as opposed to how most people set their silverware today. And the reason being, back then, the silversmith would have his insignia on the back handle of the silverware. Because, you know, if you spend a lot of money in your silverware, you, you want to be using show it. Right, exactly. Yeah, Alexander, he had the stunt, you know. Yeah. He came from nothing, though, right? right? So can we blame him for wanting to show off a, a little bit? I mean, there's a lot of hard work. Right. He had a lot so to much. prove compared to the other founding fathers. He absolutely did. I mean, absolutely coming from nothing. I think my favorite part of this room, actually, is um, the story behind... The silver wine cooler. Now, this yeah. is a replica of the silver wine cooler he received from George Washington as a gift. And Hamilton received this, I'm sure you know about the Reynolds affair. Yeah, right. very, he had very a, well. Yeah, he had a mistress, he came up publicly. Mm -hmm. A lot of people didn't want to be associated with Hamilton after that. This was George Washington's subtle way of telling him he was still his friend, that he was still there for him. Got you. And this room uh, could also maybe kind of be used as a dressing room as well with all the mirrors behind right. the door, right? The interesting <laughs> thing about the mirrors, other than just looking at yourself, <laughs> is that they served another purpose. Yeah. If you close all the doors, you'll notice all the doors are actually mirrored. Yeah. And the reason for that is you would light their oil lamps and the candles, which reflected off these mirrors to make the room brighter. Ingenuity is absolutely incredible. I mean, it's something that you maybe notice if you look up, the, the lack of lighting fixtures yes, in the house exactly. is, pretty, is pretty intense. Um, so that's, that's uh, it's just so smart. Mm -hmm. uh, it's such a beautiful room. Yeah. Um, 
there's a really bright, very yes. fun room to oh. enter here. This room might be my favorite room in the house. Um, not because it is as green as green can possibly be, right. uh, but the fact that the seriousness of this room, and this is his study, right? right. This, is this, where is he, study. this is where he did pretty much most of his work, yeah? This would be more of like his man cave, okay. in a sense. This is where he kind of went to get away from everything. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. I have one of those as well. Yeah. I'm not necessarily desks, and I mean, I, I enjoy reading, not right. as much as Alexander did, but this is, this is insane. I love this piece right here. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, this was kind of his, this is his laptop. That's this was his MacBook, Essentially right? his laptop, yeah. This yeah. is a lab desk. This is a replica of the one that he actually owned based on the one that he uh, wrote majority of the Federal's papers on. Gotcha. Jeez Louise, that's amazing. I mean, that... I mean, the the transit getting from the countryside to right. town for work. I mean, of course, I'm sure he had to ride on the road a lot. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. I mean, it's an absolutely beautiful piece. Again, I love to read. It's one of my favorite things. Um, so did Hamilton. So did Alexander yes. in a really big way. Can you yes. tell us a little more about that? Sure. So these are his actual books that he owned. Now, Hamilton right. would have, of course, had more than five books that you see here. You would have had over a thousand books in his collection. Sure, sure. As I mean, you do. As right, you of course, know. just as everyone yeah. else. Yeah. And uh, unlike most 12-year-olds who read Spider-Man comic books. Right. He was reading what we believe Voltaire, Machiavelli, Shakespeare, uh, without any proper tutelage. Uh, it really shows how intelligent he was. Oh, his grasp of literature is amazing. If you read any of his letters, he was writing at 16, 17 yes. years old. It's just m more eloquent than most college professors right. in any yes. Ivy League. And that's how he conversed. That way, I mean, and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. The fact that he could read those books and run, you know, a company essentially right. at, the at, at the age of 13 is an incredible thing. Mm -hmm. He's so intelligent. And again, I just have to touch on the greenery green. in this yes. room. Um, green was not an easy color to obtain. Correct. So this time, is right? one of the more expensive colors you can have. Okay. Uh, the reason it was so expensive was because of the coppers that went into it to get that green color. And even the handful of people that even knew how to mix and make it is what made it so sought after. Insane. And this is the original color. Right. So all room. the colors in the house are original. We actually scraped the walls all the way down to the bottom layer and conducted a paint analysis to actually match those colors. Gotcha. Beautiful. There's a couple of things that I really uh, I'm curious about in terms of the originality. One is in the foyer. If we yes. could yeah, maybe go over there and talk about that. I, uh, you know, think that busts, generally speaking, are pretty cool. Yes. Um, <laughs> the story behind the Alexander Hamilton bust, though, and uh, and how he got billed after he yes. <laughs> he agreed to sit down for the for the, for the sculptor. Piece? Yes. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, so basically, Giuseppe Ciaracchi was the actual sculptor of the bust okay. and created this bust to be a Greco-Roman style, almost okay. depicted him to look like Julius Caesar, a Roman senator. Uh, however, after the work was done and Hamilton received this bust, he ended up receiving a bill for $620. As you do, which is kind of insane at how cheap that is now, you know, for, for yeah. a bust, but how, that, how expensive that was that back then. That would have been I mean, a lot more money than it is today. That would, I mean, generally speaking, would be roughly a quarter of his yearly salary, salary which correct. is insane and then of course Thomas Jefferson being the the guy that he was right. the special kind man he was he had to kind of one up Alexander Double right? the size of his yeah okay. and then also ordered a bus of Hamilton and then had them on opposing sides of the room uh, as they were opposed in life they were also opposed in death that is absolutely that'd be it'd be like uh, it'd be like Floyd Mayweather and and, uh, right. and Conor McGregor and two statues having two statues in their homes <laughs> like just uh, that's amazing that is absolutely incredible and uh, the flooring mm -hmm. here I mean we're again this is a luxury home it's right. but this is not marble it's not this yeah. is a oil canvas painted to look like marble as he would have had. Gotcha. And the reason he had this was simply because it was very popular for the time period. If you entered a home around that same time, most likely this is what you would find. And the reason this became so popular is simply because it was very easy to clean. Sure. Well, that makes perfect sense. Um, I'm looking over here at the staircase. This uh, looks very old. Yes. Um, this is... Uh, you said, I think, I think we talked about this earlier, 75% of this house is original, right? Correct. Yeah. Which is amazing as it is, but um, why do people typically not go upstairs here? So unfortunately, 
uh, there is not enough historical evidence to dictate what the upstairs actually look like. So gotcha. we don't know whose room belonged to whom, and we don't have any surviving furniture. And the problem stems from the short time that Hamilton actually lived here, just yeah. a little under two years. And nobody would ever be able to know what that was. As it stands right now, there is not enough information. That's insane. Well, the fact that the rest of this home is so accounted for is a really, it's a pretty incredible thing. And your knowledge has been absolutely incredible. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much for, no for doing this. Yeah. It's a beautiful home. I mean, again, just kind of seeing, and we talked about it uh, outside a little bit, but mm -hmm. you, don't, you just don't see homes in the city. And right. to see one in the way that it's still standing and it's so beautiful is amazing. So. Thank you so much for no your time. No problem. Glad You've to been have you here. Absolutely awesome. Thank you, everyone here, for joining us in our tour today. Uh, I had an amazing time with the National Park Service and the National Park Foundation. And uh, just don't forget to get out there and find your park this week during National Park Week. And be sure to share this video so that all of the others out there that haven't seen this or maybe don't know about their parks can learn about this really cool story as well. And if you're in New York, come here. It's a beautiful thing. It's an, it's an amazing time. And Range of Light here can tell you so much more that we didn't get to touch on today. But in the meantime, my man, I will see you yes. as soon as I possibly sure can. can. You're no, awesome. Always welcome. Thank man. you so much. Much love. Bye.